Good afternoon. And first of all, forget about drones, forget about the cyberspace, and imagine a country like Austria, which used to be a big empire and now it's a small country. Right in the middle of Austria, no maritime borders. At the moment, no drones and nothing. Um, this is the uh, location of the first test case security courthouses. Uh, now, having a tradition of uh, interior background, you see Austria courthouses look like this, big fortresses um, in a country of 8 and a half million inhabitants, smaller than the province of Bavaria, Germany. Or you have castles looking like this, you know, the Palace of Justice, so this still demonstrates you what uh, symbolic power of justice. Um, the Austrian Ministry of Justice um, was confronted with a couple of uh, attacks which happened every 10 years or so. People go and berserk, going into courthouses, shooting at judges or uh, uh, witnesses or uh, court personnel. And so they were interested in having a, um, a research project on uh, security courthouses. So this, we use this as a uh, first test case for DESI. And as I said, it's a very down-to-earth, uh, not very much technology involved at this stage. Uh, no European global problems, it's basically local problems, what happens in the courthouse in Austria. Um, now, there are some new buildings, as you can see here. This is the courthouse in the old buildings in Austria. Um, they were built new, and security was sort of in terms of defense of the space and physical solutions, or physical space solutions, security was built in there. Uh, you see here the entrance area. Um, it's also architecturally very interesting, and there's, <coughs> there are kind of uh, gates where you have to go through, and security is uh, taken into account from the very beginning of business house. Uh, this kind of, of, of new courthouse. But then the everyday courthouse looks something like this. This is a building that used to be a former prison uh, turned into a uh, courthouse and uh, this created the site, the interior site for our first uh, um, test case. Uh, this courthouse is supposed to be uh, renovated in 2014 and uh, there will be another courthouse 20 kilometers away and they will move in there and have a new uh, jurisdiction. So there was an, an immediate uh, concern, an immediate situation, something where we really had something to be done. What you see here, I think, is uh, the entrance. And what we did, uh, we brought together, is the place is, uh, uh, the name of the place is Neukirchen in Austria. We brought together uh, employees uh, from working there. Uh, the DESI client, the former client of the institution that has to make a decision about the uh, security investment, which in this case is the Austrian Ministry of Justice. And we had five external experts from the police, an architect who was supposed to work on the reconstruction and the refurbishing uh, the old building. Um, then a representative from the company <coughs> who would do the, uh, the building and internal security experts from the higher regional court. There's always one security expert at each jurisdiction who is uh, supposed to be in, uh, in charge of uh, implementing security <coughs> solutions. Um, now what we did, Lars already mentioned that, we, uh, the, the online tool was not available at this stage. Uh, we developed a, uh, um, a paper version called Desi in the Box, uh, using all the, what, what uh, uh, Walter just pointed out, all the different dimensions and three steps of uh, problem description, assessment, etc. But doing this in a uh, paper and pencil. You can see it here right in front, we brought uh, one of these uh, versions of these essay box versions here yeah, and you might have a look uh, after the presentation if you want to. Uh, here you can see this is the workshop uh, kit. Uh, we had a graphic designer trying to do it in a bit um, in a nice way so people would like to play with it. It's like a, it should be some fun for people to work with it. You know? <coughs> First we had the security problem description. Then we had the second stage uh, investment alternative solution to do the kind of a brainstorm workshop session. And then there was an assessment part, again using a paper or pencil version of the different uh, uh, alternatives that were to be assessed. Huh? Um, the security problem description, the first one. Um, this is a, a, a map.
map that we draw about the uh, security rate of the courthouses in the last uh, 50 years or so. And you see there's, there's just one area here, uh, up in, uh, which is Vienna, yeah, that's where things happen. But basically, there were not very many incidents. Huh? And also, a former prison, what kind of security problem could you have there? Um, just to give an example, this is an entrance situation. Uh, there is the front door, which you can see. Here, this is the, the former front door, but this is the back door, which is always open. You have a security guard sitting there, but people can go in and out here. They don't have a problem. So this is the kind of mundane uh, problem of controlling access and security in, in this kind of building, which is a typical building for a lower Austrian court suburb in the outback. Things look different in Vienna, which is the capital, but in the country they look like this. Um, here you can see there's an ashtray because this is where people go out to smoke, and they leave the door open. Everybody can go in. Um, there are, as I said before, there are real big challenges in terms of that the mafia has got the courthouses and trying to liberate the people sitting in there. Um, Vandalism, burglaries, uh, something that happens very often in public building, is a security problem, but in the case of one building, it's not the case. What typically was uh, mentioned by um, um, the employees and also by the, by the experts, we asked that um, a, a, a general aggressive behavior, now you have to think about courtrooms as, as places of high emotional involvement. You go to a courthouse like a divorce, you get a divorce, the judge says, you don't see your kid no more. We have all kinds of other uh, uh, situations where decisions are made that generate uh, a high and sometimes very aggressive emotional energy. And this has to be handled in a way. And this is the type of security, <coughs> mundane, everyday security problem that uh, people are, uh, the employees have to attack and have to handle. You know? um, the investment in alternatives. Uh, <coughs> In terms of physical, controlling the physical, uh, physical uh, access to, uh, to uh, a courthouse, this is here one, in one of these new buildings, uh, a typical solution that you have. So there's a, a door, there, you have to check in, and uh, your bags are checked, and there's no way to get around them. Um, but this is another way. Huh? Uh, so let's simply put up a, a chair for a security guard, this is a person hired from an external company, um, you know, sitting there from usually 9 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock around noon, yeah? and this is what they call a security solution. This, of course, is, as you can imagine, not a satisfactory and, and not a very um, a good solution for a security investment. Um, this one also just says, what does it say here? No guns allowed. No guns allowed. Please don't bring the guns. I remember one, one little courthouse uh, somewhere in the outback of Austria where the, the, the chief judge had a, had a sign there um, no attacks after 12 o'clock. Uh, because um, the private company was there to with a security guard system working at 12 o'clock. Uh, now, what we did, uh, we had this brainstorming session with all the, as I said, the, the employees and, and uh, and the judges and, and the experts thinking about uh, alternative uh, solutions and measures and investments. So, um, this is what it ended up with, with all these ideas and they were put to the, to the wall and uh, we tried to group them according to how, what fits to what. Uh, and um, what we came up with was uh, uh, basically three alternatives. The one was security through a more open design so you could see who's getting in so everybody could have a, a better view of people getting into the house. Uh, second <coughs> standard solution was um, um, the third one, security checks at the entrance, but as I showed you the picture before, that's what it typically looks like. And uh, the third idea was here called alternative number two, the service center at the entrance. So people get in and immediately encounter a person which is not a security person, for the service person, you know? and they say, okay, we want, who you want to see, what you want to do here, and so they manage the flow of, uh, of people getting into the, uh, to the building. You know? uh, these were the three 
ideas of the three dimensions, the three types of solutions that we developed on. Now the assessment, as Walter mentioned, we had a couple of uh, dimensions that had to be assessed, but we tried to assess the solutions against them. And this is here, you see the, the desk in the box solution. Uh, we had uh, a chart like this, you know, where, where people had the opportunity to put some points in. It's important, it's not important, uh, it's relevant, it's not relevant. And what we get here, like the security gain, you know, this is then represented here on the this is basically what you would get also in the online tool, but we did it on paper. Um, the assessment was then, um, okay, the three alternatives, I already showed you this before. Um, and in terms of assessment, we got these, so I said simply use a big count, the points that you get here, and then you get the assessment done. Uh, in terms of lessons learned, um, Involving people in such a process of negotiation, coming up with ideas and, and brainstorming, uh, we can get the commitment, which is very important in a, in a setting like the courthouse because security has to do with the commitment of the people, with people being aware of the situation and also being involved in, in the daily work, integrating the idea of security into the work. And if you have a, a situation like this where you bring them all together, you don't, be, you don't bring in the external experts, you go through the house and say, okay, this is the solution, this is what you have to do. Um, you don't get a commitment under these, these conditions. But when you involve the people, you get more commitment. And so this was a, 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 thing to do, a good lesson learned from, from the DESI process. Having this participatory uh, type of approach with uh, involvement of the, uh, of the experts. A second lesson learned, this was the first test case. What we found out that the way we talk as experts and academics often uh, does not resonate with the everyday employee of an Austrian courthouse. So um, we did with translation, what do you mean by fundamental rights? Well, yes, fundamental rights, this is etc. blah, blah, blah. So we had to adapt some of our highly abstract, pretty concise, and logical, and purely, absolutely rational criteria in your wording that uh, was better understandable for the people on the ground. And, um, what also was interesting in this workshop setting and also using the DESI, um, the DESI tool was that uh, people develop an understanding of how their little problems probably related to some two minutes, last slide, uh, resonated with their, uh, um, how, how their local problems resonated with the more general problems. Uh, and how they, um, what their security problem was, not only a thing that happened to them in a specific situation, but was something that had to do with it. the way the court system is organized, the way uh, public money is spent, the way decisions are made, etc., etc. So at the end, we got a good commitment, we got an understanding, and we came up with a couple of solutions, alternative solutions that were assessed, and that hopefully, this is then the question, uh, final decisions are not made so far, 